Here is the question, which seems easy, but has some tricky elements to it. You need to calculate the current age of Shyla. If the ratio of ages between Mira and Shyla is 5 to 4, after 3 years, their age ratio changes and becomes 11 to 9. You need to calculate the current age of Shyla. And you have 4 different choices. Choice A, 23 years. Choice B, 24 years. Choice C, 25 years. And choice D, 26 years. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution on your own. Ready or not, I am going to share with you my solution. But if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share it in comments. To solve it, we need to define a variable x, which would be a ratio between Mira's and Shyla's current age. If that's the case, then the current age of Mira will be 5x and the current age of Shyla will be 4x, which means that we can build an equation and calculate the ratio of ages after 3 years. In this equation, we will have 5x plus 3 divided by 4x plus 3, which would be equal to 11 ninth. After simplification, we will have 9 multiplied in parentheses 5x plus 3 equal 11 multiplied in parentheses 4x plus 3 which means that the x will be equal 33 minus 27, which would be equal to 6. So to calculate present age of Shyla, we need to multiply 6 by 4, which was her ratio in initial equation for the current age, which would be equal to 24. So the correct answer is choice B, 24 years old. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. And as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments so we can all learn. Here is an interesting question, which validates how well you do planning of your day-to-day -day work. Mary spends one-third of her 24-hour day at work. Meetings take one-fourth of her workday. How many hours does she spend in meetings? You have four different choices. Choice A, one hour and 30 minutes. Choice B, two hours, choice C, two hours and 30 minutes, and choice D, three hours. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a bit longer, depending how well you typically solve these types of problems. Ready or not, let's go ahead and solve this challenge together. As you might be well aware, full day has 24 hours. Mary's working hours are very typical. They represent one third of the full day which is 8 hours, and we calculate it by multiplying 24 by one third, or actually dividing 24 by 3. Meetings take one fourth of her workday. So to calculate how much time she spends in meetings, we need to multiply 8 hours by one fourth, and the result is 2 hours. So the correct answer is choice B, 2 hours. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Here's the question for you to practice. If you calculate the answer to this question, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. You need to calculate missing number, and you're presented with three triangles. Each triangle has numbers in the corners as well as in the middle. First triangle has number 18 on the top, numbers 4 and 2 at the bottom, and number 3 in the middle. Second triangle has number 56 on the top, numbers 6 and 1 at the bottom, and number 8 in the middle. Third triangle has number 104 on the top, number 8 in the middle, number 5 in the bottom left corner, and number in the bottom right corner is missing. Your choices are 9, 10, 11, and 12. If you can calculate the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's the puzzling question that you might frequently see on the test. The sum of all the ages of four family members is 85. What would be the sum of their ages together in five years? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 90. Choice B, 95. Choice C, 100. And choice D, 105. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm moving forward to get to the correct solution together. 
What's interesting about this problem is that it is simpler than you think. So the key here is not to overthink the problem. There are four family members and some of their ages is 85. And in five years, each family member will be five years older. So incremental age increase for all family members can be calculated as four, four family members multiplied by five, five years equals 20 years. So some of the ages of all family members in five years can be calculated as 85, which is original sum, plus 20, which is the incremental age increase and would be equal to 105. So the correct choice here is choice D, 105. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar puzzles on the test. And now here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with triangle, which is broken down into three equal horizontal parts. On the left side of the triangle, you see numbers eight, four, and three if you go from the bottom to the top. And on the right side of the triangles, you see numbers two, six, and one number is missing. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, six. Choice B, 10. Choice C, seven. And choice D, two. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured out the solution, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You're presented with four different letters and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. Very frequently on the test, you might get a question to determine the next item in the series. We are looking at exactly this type of question here. You are presented with the series of 3x3 three three matrices. Each matrix has circle, arrow and triangle inside. And your goal is to determine matrix number 4 in the series. You are presented with 4 different choices. Choice A, B, C and D. Take a close look and see if you can determine the pattern. If ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you the correct answer, at least from my standpoint. When solving these types of challenges, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And there are multiple different patterns here for each shape. Circle, for example, changes places, but always remains black and always filled with color. Triangle changes places in the matrix, but changes from filled with black color to none filled with black border. An arrow rotates counterclockwise, changes places in the matrix, but changes from filled with black color to none filled with black border. So the correct choice here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. In case you see any other solutions, please make sure to post in comments. And if you're getting ready for the test, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description section of this video. Here's an interesting question you might easily get on the test. John's monthly spending is $1,500. 40% of his spending goes toward utilities and the amount that he spends on heating and electricity is 15% more than what he spends on utilities. How much does John spend 
on things besides heating, electricity, and utilities. You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $210. Choice B, $220. Choice C, $230. And Choice D, $240. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. The correct answer here is choice A, $210. Do you know how to get to this answer? If you figured it out, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. I wanted to ask you for a favor. There are a lot of people that you might know that would benefit from this content. Would you be able to share this content with them? Unless, of course, you're driving. Then you can do it right after you get off the car. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a cool question you frequently see on the test. You need to calculate the question mark. And you're presented with the three-layer pyramid. On the bottom layer, you have numbers 8 and 2. On the middle layer, you have numbers 4 and 6. And in the top layer, you have numbers 3. And on the other side of the pyramid, you have a question mark. And this question mark can be one of those four values. Your choice A is 6. Choice B is 10 choice C is 7 and choice D is 2. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. For some of you, this type of question might be easy, but for some of you, it might require some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out, the key to solve these types of challenges is always look for patterns. And if you look closely, each row adds up to 10. And vertically, values also add up to 15. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. Kate has $33, which is only 20% of the cost of shoes that she would like to purchase. How much do the shoes cost? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $66. Choice B, $99. Choice C, $150. And choice D, $165. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds, depending how well you are with math and percentages. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. The answer to this problem is very simple. $33 is 20% or one-fifth of the shoe's price. So the total cost of the shoes would be 33 multiplied by 5, which would be equal $165. So the correct answer here is choice D, $165. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for the interview or assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get hired for their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. This particular question was just recently introduced in the test, and I would need your help to determine if I answered it correctly. You're presented with the very unusual shape and you need to detect all the triangles that are part of this shape. You have four possible choices. Choice A, 11. Choice B, 13. Choice C, 15. And choice D, 17. Do you see the answer? Consider giving yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can count all the triangles. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and show you how many triangles did I discover. Tricky question, don't you think so? But I was very surprised when I counted 15 triangles in this shape. Let me go over and show all of them to you. Here's the first one. Second. Third. Fourth. Fifth. Sixth. Seventh. 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 
13th, 14th, and 15th. Do you see any additional ones? Please make sure to post them in the comment section of this video. And if you're getting ready for the assessment test, please make sure to check out the description for the link to the ebook that will help you to get ready. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like this content, can you please give this video big thumbs up? This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure you will get it in the future. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the interesting question, which is easy to understand, but at the same time, you will have a lot of fun solving it. You need to calculate the simple expression, 12 divided by two and then multiply it on the value in parentheses, which is three minus one. Take a look closely and see if you can come up with the answer. There are three operations here, division, multiplication, and subtraction. All you need to determine is which one to do first, second, and third. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue and get it solved together. The order of operations in math tells us that the first expression we need to solve is in parentheses. We first need to calculate three minus one. And obviously the answer is two. The big question is what do we do next? The order PEMDAS tells us that we need to do multiplication and division. But what order doesn't mention is that we need to do it from left to right. And what's interesting, the acronym itself is a little bit confusing because it shows multiplication first and then division. But in our case, we need to do division first and divide 12 by two and then do multiplication. Once we divide 12 by two, we get to six and the final expression we need to solve would be six multiplied by two. So the correct answer here is 12. So did you solve this challenge on your own? Was it easy for you? Please share your thought process and your solution in the comment section of this video. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day so please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a cool question which you frequently see on the test. You're presented with two cubes. One cube has side length equal one unit and second cube is a larger cube and it has side length equals three units. So the question is how many small cubes can fit into the large cube? And you have four different choices. Choice A, nine, choice B, 18, choice C, 27, and choice D, 81. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a few moments to calculate it, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. This is about as much time as you get in the real test. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, you need to visually imagine how many small cubes can fit into one side of the larger cube. And the answer is that three small cubes can fit on each side of the large cube. And since cube is three dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 
3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3, which is equal 3 cube. That's where the word cube might be coming from, which equals 27. Since cube is three-dimensional, the number of small cubes that can fit into the large cube can be calculated using the formula. 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 equals 3 cube equals 27. So the correct choice here is choice C, 27. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.